Good afternoon, everyone. This is Reyes Ramirez with Fresh Arts. I am the Programs Outreach Coordinator. Um, and if you've been here before, welcome back. I hope you've been well. Uh, if you haven't been here before, well, Fresh Arts is a nonprofit arts organization primarily based out of Houston. Uh, we help creatives, uh, artists, uh, collectives, uh, anything to do with the arts. Uh, we help them with uh, professional development, uh, with resources such as knowledge sharing um, and some other online resources, which one of which you, that you're seeing right now, which is the resource roundup with me, Reyes. Um, and so we've got a lot of stuff lined up for you today. Uh, but the first thing I want to do, or the first thing I like to do, since we're, you know, filming from the comfort of my home in the cubby in the corner that I work from my desk, um, I do have a shout out uh, today. Last week I was wearing uh, an artist shirt and today is no different. Uh, today I am wearing, uh, hopefully you can see it. Uh, there you go. Uh, so this is a shirt by um, the artist Mario Gonzalez. Uh, he is a muralist here, based here in Houston, Texas. And in this particular mural, uh, this is actually at the University of Houston. It was painted in the 1970s, uh, right when he got back from the Vietnam War uh, as a, as a Mexican-American uh, student. And at the time, the campus was still segregated. And so he was commissioned to paint, along with Ruben Reina, uh, this mural and so uh, this is just a, an excerpt or rather like a piece of the mural uh, that you can go see in the, and it's part of the UH public art collection. Um, so definitely, hopefully you could check that out once U of H reopens, but uh, until then, uh, you know, you got this shirt to live by, go to the UH public art collection, uh, visit Mario Gonzalez's uh, website um, or rather his Facebook page and check out his other cool stuff. But uh, that's who I'm wearing today. Um, and so part of the resource roundup Reyes is that we um, highlight some opportunities, uh, some other great stuff that we think will be helpful or uplifting to you, uh, the viewer. And so what I want to get to actually is uh, we have a lot of things featured in our artist opportunity board. Uh, but one thing to note is that uh, moving forward, we're going to try to have guests who can speak to the opportunities that they post, that they represent. And so today we're actually lucky uh, to have a representative of one of the resources speak upon that resource. So today will be the uh, Poets and Writers uh, grant. And so uh, if we could bring on Lupe Mendez, who is the outreach coordinator for Houston for Poets and Writers. What's up, Lupe? What's up? <laughs> hope you're doing well man uh so far so good um uh enjoying the breach bees uh, uh beach breeze here in galveston um for the day so uh thanks for having me on and for uh, doing all the roundups of course thank you yeah so can you please talk about the poets and writers your role with them and uh what the grants are sweet um yeah so um, my position, I'm the Literary Outreach Coordinator for Poets and Writers, a national organization that uh, provides support uh, and uses as, and is used as a resource for poets and writers uh, across the United States. Um, their official offices are uh, in Manhattan, uh, but they have uh, orchestrated uh, traditionally a series of grants that uh, certain cities can apply to that show uh, of, that are hubs for different literary arts. Um, so Seattle, uh, New York, Phoenix, Houston, um, uh, New Orleans, Detroit, a bunch of different cities. So uh, my job comes out of a particular grant uh, funded by the Hearst Foundation uh, and I'm a two-year major project called the, the United States of Writing. Um, and they provide extra funding uh, for three cities. So Detroit, um, New York, uh, Detroit, New Orleans, and Houston have been selected. And so my job is to guide Houston writers um, to poetsandwriters.org um, to apply for grant monies um, in two ways, right? So one of the ways is the traditional uh, organizational grants. Uh, any uh, nonprofit or grassroots organization or collective of writers um, can apply for 
funds to work with panels, workshops, uh, readings, um, uh, featured readings for writers, um, any of one of those, and you can apply for funding through Poets and Writers. Uh, and based on both the need and uh, the uniqueness of the event, they can be funded. Um, additionally, uh, and most recently, with a, a very quick turnaround deadline uh, for September, um, what is it? No, actually, yeah, the end of this month, uh, September 30th, um, is individual artist grants that Poets and Writers has just put together uh, just for the month. Um, individual artists, if you would like, uh, if you're a writer, uh, poetry, prose, uh, fiction, um, what have you, uh, if you would like to, and if you have an event uh, or reading or project that you want to put together, between now and, or between October uh, 15th and December 31st, uh, Poets and Writers is uh, creating really quick turnaround grants um, for individual uh, writers who want to be able to put on their own works without even having to be a part of uh, an organization. Um, if you want any more of the info in that regard, you can definitely head to uh, pw.org. Uh, and, and you can do a search for grants and awards and it'll send you uh, to the actual page with all the information. Um, additionally, you can go uh, do a search for United States of Writing um, and you'll definitely hit up on all the information. The two application processes are there on the actual PW website. They're pretty simple um, and really harmless. Um, they're... There's not a lot of extra paperwork with when it comes to the grants. It's it's real simple to fill out the information. Um, it just requires the basics of when it's happening, uh, how long it's going to happen, and potentially uh, how many people would be seeing or participating in the event. Um, uh, we get a, a larger chunk of money under this grant uh, because there are three, uh, only three cities that have been highlighted, so um, that's a plus. So if you are a Houston writer um, uh, and, and someone who lives within the area and will be producing or putting together uh, a reading or a panel or a workshop uh, in the Houston area, um, I invite you to please come to pw.org and uh, make sure that you sign up and uh, um, see what's available. Um, additionally, if you have any questions or want to get a hold of me, uh, you can reach me on Twitter at uh, Houston PW or at Houston PW uh, ORG. Um, and I, you can message me there um, and that I can answer any questions or help you with whatever things that you're needing um, and can highlight the work that you're doing. So uh, I hope that um, this is the first of lots of contacts uh, for the future. Absolutely. I just have two quick follow-up questions, if you will. Sure. Uh, one, so normally it, the grant takes kind of like a sponsor, right? Like an organizational sponsor or space or business sponsor. But in this case, uh, that it, that is not true, right? You can apply as an individual artist or collective. Yes. The, the grants that are due at the end of this month are specifically made um, in response to the fact that uh, we've actually had a few artists mentioned to us that organizations that they wanted to work with aren't doing anything because of how uh, COVID has affected the arts community. So in response, um, we've worked with poets and writers uh, as the outreach coordinators to develop um, individual artist grants so that we don't have to uh, worry about the, the organizational part and we can get funding still straight to artists that could use it. Awesome. And then the other question I have is that for the United States of Writing uh, grant, that one is you can apply for a series of workshops, panels and or work. Uh, yes. Readings. Uh, if you have say you have a month long uh, series of workshops or panels or uh, 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 featured reading events, you can apply for each one of those. Um, and that won't matter in terms of the, the larger um, amount that's there. You can apply as many times uh, as you would like. And if they're all linked in a series, you just make a note of it in the grant and, and that's all taken into consideration. 
Awesome. Anyways, thank you for your time. Thank you for uh, tuning in and uh, and letting everyone know about this opportunity and providing some clarity. So again, thank you, Lupe. Uh, stay safe and stay well. Same for you. Thank you for doing all this work with Fresh Arts. Uh, thank y'all for watching. Of course, of course. See you around, man. Later. And there you have it. Um, yeah, so this is a really great opportunity. Um, and with that being said, uh, if you have an opportunity, you're hosting an opportunity and you would like to come on the show, just send me an email, uh, reyes at fresharts.org, and we can work that out. We can pre-record sessions. We can You can go live. But again, if you want have an opportunity for the community, just let me know, and I'll be happy to, to let everyone know and to have you on the show. Um, <clears throat> so now moving on to the next part of this. Uh, so we've got some inside scoop on that grant. Uh, I'm going to go through the opportunity opportunity board and with some upcoming deadlines. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. All right, so here's the opportunity board. Uh, to get here, you just go to succeed as an artist and right here, artist opportunity board. You click on that and you'll be right here. You scroll down and here you can see all of our opportunities. So I'm going to go through a few that have upcoming deadlines uh, just to let you know so you don't miss them. But to not miss them, uh, go ahead and subscribe right here. You can click um, up here, Succeed as an Artist in the resource newsletter, and you can subscribe, and you can get these straight to your inbox every first Thursday of the month. So uh, the first thing we want to mention, again, is that United States are writing project grants. Uh, one thing that we didn't get to say is that uh, for you, you can go up to, or as Lupe mentioned, you can do... Uh, up to three sessions and you actually get more. So you get a $750 for a three session project. Um, and the really cool thing about it is that you can do a combination of things. You can do readings, workshops, and community conversations, like a panel, a discussion, town hall, or Q and A. So you can do, um, you know, a workshop, then a reading, then a, then a panel, or you can do three straight readings or three straight workshops or three straight uh, community conversations or any combination. So I think that's really cool and unique. So the deadline for that is Wednesday, September 30th. Up next, we have Gulf Coast Journals, uh, the um, literary journal based out of the University of Houston. Uh, they have their 2020 Tony Beauchamp Prize in Critical Art Writing. So art writers, uh, this is pretty, this is an amazing uh, contest. It awards $3,000 if you're the winner and two runners up will receive $1,000. Uh, and it's free. It's actually free to submit uh, online. So, you know, what can you lose? If you're an uh, art writer, um, and I'm an art writer and I'm a big fan of Houston arts writing and Houston artists, as we all are in Fresh Arts. Uh, but if you're writing about uh, art, definitely check out this competition. It's free to uh, submit and it's previously unpublished work or and work that has been published within the last year uh, that will be considered. So uh, just keep that in mind. So if it's unpublished, so if you wrote it, maybe I think technically like two, three years ago, it's unpublished, you can submit it here. If you publish within the last year, submit it. So good luck. Up next, we have a few job uh, postings. So the artist boat, which I believe is based out of Galveston, um, they have an opening for a full charge bookkeeper. Uh, and that is due September 30th. Imprint has two openings actually, um, and they're up next. And so both are due again at the end of the month, Wednesday, September 30th. Uh, Imprint is a literary organization that brings really, really big name writers, uh, Pulitzer Prize winners, Nobel Prize winners uh, to Houston and to do public readings. Uh, and they have a really, really amazing season coming up. So check out their set, uh, their uh, website. But for now, as part of the resource roundup, they have two job openings, one for a communications manager um, and that is due Wednesday, September 30th, and another one for a development director. Um, and that is due September 30th as well. So definitely check this out. Up next, we have the Artist Relief. Uh, they're going through their cycle four, and this is a uh, emergency fund 
uh, that is meant to uh, distribute uh, grants to artists facing dire financial emergencies due to COVID-19. They've had cycles uh, throughout the year ever since the beginning of the crisis. So that is due Wednesday, September 23rd, which is next week. So if you need it, get on it. Uh, the only advice I have um, is, you know, the sooner that you apply, uh, the sooner you can see what you what they need from you and you can gather that paperwork. So if you really need the funds, please apply uh, and please, uh, you know, read the guidelines and see what they're going to need from you. And again, this is due September 23rd Eastern time. Uh, yeah, so check out Eastern time. That's another important thing to note. So maybe you're thinking 11.59 p.m. CST, but they're going by Eastern time. Up next, we have the Iva Ya Asantewa grant for queer women plus dance artists. This is due October 4th. And this is a $7,000 grant awarded to U.S.-based artists for making cutting-edge dance and movement-based performance work. So if you identify as a woman, and they put the plus because they mean to incorporate uh, anyone, artists that identify, or dancers rather, that identify as women, gender non-conforming, and non-binary, and or non-binary. So uh, definitely check this one out if you, I know Houston has an amazing dance scene. So um, please uh, check this out if this applies to you. Uh, there is a $6 application fee. That's, that's the uh, only other note that I would provide. Um, and usually that is because a lot of submission uh, websites, they just cost money to maintain for subscriptions. And uh, if, you have, if you have a submittable, if you uh, know slide room, um, it is what it is, but for this six dollars, uh, you get a chance to win seven thousand dollars, which I think is a pretty good um, investment. I'll do October fourth. Up next, we have Textlandia magazine. This is a relatively new uh, journal based out of uh, Houston, I believe, actually. So. I, might, I think it, if I'm correct, it is affiliated with Rice University. Um, and the cool thing is, yes, they ex this in particular for their prize, it applies to their literary works or the literary submissions. So fiction, poetry, creative nonfiction, reportage. Uh, but they also accept hybrid works and visual art, which is another cool thing. So if you want some stuff to get out there in public, Definitely submit to this. This is Textlandia Magazine. Their submissions close Wednesday, September 30th at 11.59 p.m. And they seem to be pretty open to, um, uh, what is it, to hybrid works and to experimental works. Up next, we have the 2021 New American Voices Playwriting Festival. Uh, this is by the Landing Theater. And so at the end of this month, they're taking submissions for full length plays for their playwriting festival. Uh, four plays will be selected for staged readings during the Landing Theater Company Spring Festival in Houston, Texas next year. Uh, selected playwrights, you'll get a stipend of $100 uh, for winning but I believe the main thing is to kind of have that piece or that play read out or performed uh, to be seen. So definitely check this out if you're a playwright, theater. Um, definitely check this out. Um, this is due September 30th. And then up next, uh, the final opportunity we'll be focusing or uh, showcasing today is Young Audiences Incorporated of Houston Arts for Learning Lab. And so this is a really interesting uh, professional development skill building uh, opportunity. Um, the thing about this one is that it costs, uh, the reduced cost per participant for 2021 is $125, but if you complete the program, you get $500. Um, so I think that's a, a very hearty investment but I think you get, obviously you get more in return. And this is for um, arts educators, primarily in dance, theater, and visual arts, who are looking to diversify their skills and kind of learn some new techniques or learn some new approaches to their arts teaching um, pedagogy. So 
definitely check this out if you're looking to kind of up your resume or up your learning experience. Or again, uh, if you're just someone who is, you know, looking to improve their craft and diversify it, definitely check this one out. Uh, this is primarily for people who, um, who work, I guess, to uh, educate uh, younger audiences. Um, I believe, let's see if you work in K through five, I believe. K through five uh, educators, so kindergarten through fifth grade. So if you provide any instruction or um, anything like that to uh, younger audiences, definitely check out uh, this opportunity. Ooh, all right, well, there you go. So that is as far as our uh, opportunity shout outs from the opportunity board go. Uh, another thing we want to do here is, again, highlight the really good stuff that's happening in Houston. Um, and so we have some very good success stories to report. Um, the first thing we want to talk about is Artist Inc. facilitator Chris Thomas. Uh, Artist Inc. is our professional development program. Um, and we have facilitators, uh, artists who have experience, who have had success in their field. We invite them as facilitators to share their knowledge. But Chris Thomas is one of them. And he has received an award as part of the inaugural Houston Artist Commissioning Project. So again, congratulations, uh, Chris. Um, you're amazing and more than well deserved. So I hope, uh, I can't wait to see this. And this is part of the Society for the Performing Arts. And then up next we have, uh, so during the beginning stages and of the COVID-19 outbreak, Fresh Arts, we tried to adapt to what was happening to let you, the audience, know of what was going on in the arts community. Um, and so as we moved through the COVID-19 crisis, uh, we invited artists from the community to share what cool things they were doing to adapt. And one of those conversations involved Jamie Robertson. Uh, she um, is an amazing photographer and we featured her in her project, uh, her MFA thesis. And so if you watch then, you discovered that she was looking for a publisher. Well, guess what? It happened. Uh, congratulations, Jamie. More than well-deserved. Uh, her book, um, let me pull it up, Charting the Afroscape of Leon County, Texas, was picked up by Fifth Wheel Press. We're gonna, we can drop the link below in regards to pre-ordering this. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous book. So definitely check it out. And if again, if you saw the interview, you saw that she was looking to get it printed uh, because it is so beautiful and it shows up really well um, on print. And so, again, congratulations, Jamie. More than well-deserved. And then up next, another success story is we have, again, as part of that COVID-19 uh, crisis um, discussions that we've been having on how artists have been adapting, uh, well, at one point we also had Carla Sue. Uh, or rather Carla Lyles, who was behind Carla Sue. And during the COVID-19 outbreak in the, in the, in, during those stages, uh, probably like beginning to like maybe mid, um, she started using her Instagram to uplift uh, other small businesses, particularly artists and creatives. And so uh, congratulations, Carla. Uh, again, more than well-deserved. She received the Opulence Award for helping countless small business owners Again, by founding an Instagram style home shopping network to uplift and shine a spotlight on other small businesses during the initial outbreak of COVID-19. Again, congratulations, Carla. Uh, we love having you involved with Fresh Arts activities uh, because you are such a really great beacon of, uh, you know, of showcasing others. And that's really what we're all about at Fresh Arts. So thanks again, congratulations. And so those are just some su success stories uh, that we found. If you have any success stories, you've been involved with Fresh Arts and you have found any kind of success, please let us know. We'll be more than happy to shout you out. We love seeing people win. We love seeing artists succeed. So again, if you've been involved, if whether you, it was the summit or you picked up something even from here, from the opportunity board or from the roundup, and you found success, you were honorable mention even, just please let us know. We'll be more than happy to shout you out. Again, just let me know, uh, reyes at fresharts.org. There you go. All right, 
And then finally, uh, one last section I want to get to in regards to what is happening in the arts community. Uh, today, I believe we have, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen just to kind of show you the event on Facebook. But Houston in Action has been trying to engage artists. Uh, and so they have an event today, uh, I believe, right, today at 2.30 p.m. called Artists and the Vote. This is uh, in partnership with Fresh Arts ourselves. But again, this is a discussion about the ways artists and arts workers can get help get out the vote for the upcoming November 3rd election. So definitely check this one out if you're an artist and you're looking to get involved in uh, getting people to vote and finding ways to get involved. So absolutely check this out. Uh, it's, um, it's a very pertinent time to be voting. And again, as an artist, you know, you're part of the, the community as well. You're part of the city. So it's important that your voice is also heard. So definitely check this out. And there you go. So the event, that event is posted in the comments. Um, and so with that being said, uh, I just want you to know that um, we have something else coming out. Uh, so in the past, we've done conversations and discussions here on Facebook Live. And now they're being reposted as well on YouTube. And we also had an inst we have an Instagram live uh, show featuring Sydney Mitchell, our communications manager, um, where she um, essentially communicates different events that are happening uh, by and for the arts community here in Houston. Um, but another thing uh, to, that we're presenting and we're putting forward uh, as part of our digital uh, online series and resources is a podcast. So yes, we're getting into the podcast uh, business, everyone. Uh, Fresh Arts Podcast, we have a series coming out uh, in October. There you go, October 8th, uh, called Should I or Shouldn't I? Where we will talk to creatives from all walks of life, and we're gonna ask different pertinent questions that we think are very relevant to artists and creatives in the Houston community and beyond. Um, and we're gonna ask different questions and we're gonna invite two creatives per episode to discuss different viewpoints of how they reached conclusions, their, their differing conclusions uh, on these questions. So some questions involve, should I or shouldn't I get an MFA? Uh, should I or shouldn't I move to a different city for its art scene? Uh, should I or shouldn't I uh, start a nonprofit? So again, um, if you have some very, very uh, deep questions about what it means to succeed as an artist, please check out this podcast. Uh, we'd love to have you uh, hear it. Um, and we have an amazing array of artists that we've invited, that we've curated to speak on these uh, questions and discuss their journeys and how they came to their answers. So definitely check out this podcast. Listen. It's hosted by me as well, Reyes Ramirez. Um, and so, yeah. So please tune in. Uh, and as always, we'll find ways to get you, the listener, involved. So always stay tuned to what we're doing. We're always trying to bring the best to what uh, artists and bring attention to what they're doing and how they're succeeding. And so with that being said, uh, please become a friend of Fresh Arts. Uh, become our friend to support our efforts to provide resources and virtual pro programming to artists. Uh, and the, the great thing is, is by the end of the month, uh, September 30th, the Fresh Arts Board is excited to announce a $10,000 match now through the end of this month. So donate today to double your impact. So again, this is really important to what we do. Uh, this is to provide resources to artists. And this, uh, again, make sure that we can pay them, that we can plan and put forward these projects that, again, um, benefit the artist community here in Houston. So please uh, become our friend today and donate. And again, your donation will be matched by the Fresh Arts Board. And there you have it. Um, so please uh, check us out, subscribe to our many, to our newsletters, and please tune in to the many, many digital resources we provide. Uh, join the artist registry, attend a virtual workshop, tap into local arts happenings through our Art on Tap newsletter, and subscribing to, uh, or rather following our Instagram. We're going to have a great show uh, on Tuesday, every Tuesday with Sydney Mitchell. Um, go to our artist resource library. Uh, and in fact, if you have issues uh, or if you've never written a grant before, we have a grant writing toolkit. 
if you've never budgeted for a project, we have a grant uh, project, uh, or rather a project budget toolkit. And we have so many other things that you should definitely check out. And obviously check out our other things such as the fiscal sponsorship um, program that we have, and then uh, apply and have access to funds that you may not have had before. So definitely check us out at www.fresharts.org. Stay tuned to what we're doing. And again, we're gonna do right by you. So that's it for today. Uh, again, stay safe, stay well. Let us know if you find any success in your life as an artist and we'll gladly shout you out. So again, thanks and I'll see you next time.